Okay, welcome back. You're watching Inside Politics. We continue with the show and our deliberations right here centered on the latest list of cabinet appointments done by President William Ruto. In studio, I'm joined by Fred Okango, Secretary of Political Affairs Azimio, Kennedy Ondiek, UDA Coordinator Nyanza Region, Dr. Isaac Hassan, Governance and Leadership Expert, and Ishmael Nyaribo, an advocate. Ishmael, I'd like to begin with you on this, and just briefly, because our conversation a little bit earlier on seemed to hint that, especially what Okango mentioned, that Parliament plays a role in oversight. And hence, in, is, in essence, that is the real opposition in terms of holding the government to account. So in terms of how a constitution is structured and what not, how exactly should we term Azimio as the main opposition, as just a political party that was interested in having a conversation around the government of national unity? How do we go about it? On this matter lapse, they went amiss. There is something that should have been done, but it was not done. And that's why you heard during the clamor for the BBI development, people said there appears to be gaps that need to be closed by rewriting the Constitution so that we entrench the official opposition into their position. And that's why you saw uh, the BBI was trying to suggest that we should create the office of official opposition and, uh, and uh, you know, opposition leader. So with that gap, we now see this kind of uh, 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 intellectual arguments, whether mm -hmm. Raila Odinga is the leader of opposition mm -hmm. or he's simply a leader of Azimio, or like <laughs> Kenneth said when we were on a break that Azimio is amorphous, therefore he's only a leader of the ODM. Mm -hmm. So there is that gap. And it is that gap that you can see is creating quite a bit of rifts, quite a bit of confusions in the way our multi-party democracy is managed in the country. Okay. Once this is addressed, and, and you could see that even Root himself tried to create prime cabinet secretary. Previously, they were trying to create that also. And everyone was asking, where is it captured in the Constitution? So that gap is a major issue, which I believe when we go into rewriting our Constitution, those issues would come out clearly to name a, 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 an official opposition. Saying that our parliament is now the leader of opposition, to be honest, is stretching it, because not only that we don't have a, a functional parliament, in terms of political governance, you know, it, it, people go to parliament and immediately get to their own corner. If it's Kenya Kwanzaa, they are dealing with Kenya Kwanzaa issues. Okay. If it is uh, Azimio, they are dealing with Azimio. And by the way, you have now seen that even within Azimio, again, WIPA, again, ODM. So we cannot say that our parliament uh, uh, checks the executive. It should, but it does not. So going forward, do you just expect a rubber stamp from parliament in terms of this kind oh, of Oh, definitely. Nominees? You know, Jesse, there is rumor that uh, the, the finance bill is clandestinely being figured out how it, because, I mean, the government must operate with money. I, I don't know if that's the reason they chose Mbadi himself to go to the treasury. But there is rumor, and these are rumors, we will leave them as rumors, but okay. we will come back to argue once we see any action. The truth is that uh, the parliament of Kenya is completely incapable of checking William Ruto. Now that they have chosen these other four from the opposition, we will at least give them a month or two to see whether indeed they can actually come up and stand against the uh, executive excesses and, and they try to check the executive, as you say. But as we have seen, and the reasons why Gen Z went to the streets, members of parliament and all the political elites were unable to check the, the excesses of the executive. Okay, Dr. Hassan, as you come in, talk to us about this political masterstroke from President William Ruto. Some opine that it is definitely <clears throat> a move meant to, you know, cement his uh, political expediency and whatnot. How do you view it? And equally, is it a confirmation that politicians always look out for their selfish, selfish interests rather than the people's agenda? Yeah. Uh, I think there are two things. One, we can look at it from the perspective of uh, political, uh, uh, um, political protection, I may call it. And uh, we know very well the mountain was shaken last time. And we know the whole mountain decided to go against the president uh, in terms of uh, 
his, uh, their share in terms of how their political uh, expectations were addressed. Um, having had that shake as a politician, he decided to look for an option where he can find another force which is likely to balance the equation uh -huh. of his political uh, career. Uh, and sometimes when you don't have a, a group of uh, strength, uh, if you don't have a strength from a different region and you are relying on one region, you are likely to lose your grounds. And that is what most likely has happened. And that's why there was that quick shift to Western and uh, Nyanza. That is on the political aspect. On the other aspect, he has been continuously losing ground in parliament. The fact that the coalition that he was running, the Kenya Kwanzaa, had a strong members who have been supporting him in his uh, agendas in parliament. And when that shake-up came, quite a number of members of parliament have said, we trusted you, but now you have, uh, you have lo we have lost trust in you. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's, it's not what we are saying. It is what the politicians who, from uh, Central who have said like that, who, has been, who have been in his backyard earlier on, and uh, de protecting and defending all his uh, points. Okay. So um, then the option he had was to pull again another politicians or another uh, political party that is likely to suppress the, uh, the, the, the politicians from central so that he's able to push his agenda. And exactly the calculation or the arithmetic he has used in terms of uh, the way he has made the appointment is clear indication that he wants strength from uh, uh, ODM. And once he gets strength from ODM, by the way, we must know also that ODM members of parliament have been traditionally known to be uh, either in the government or once they are not in the government, they are the hecklers in uh, parliament. And their heckling is not necessarily <coughs> objective. Their heckling is to have either disorganized the, uh, the, the government of the day or they get their share. And once they get their share, we have seen from the time of um, uh, the late uh, President Moy to President Kibaki in, uh, uh, in uh, coalition government, mm -hmm. to the handshake of <coughs> President Mo, uh, Uhuru, and currently, we don't know what the name that will going to be, but the broad-based uh, government of uh, President uh, Ruto. Yes, yes. And therefore, uh, if you look at it critically, if I look at it from the aspect of um, uh, political uh, uh, arithmetics, the bottom line is that the president had to bring other people or another force that will go in to suppress the force in uh, uh, Central. Okay, and then I guess the next question would be what will be the political cost for this ODM leaders joining with the blessing of the party leader, Raila Odinga. Kennedy, as you come in, I just want to hear an array of political voices, both present and past, reacting perhaps to what exactly played out or castigating any move in terms of bringing Raila Odinga into the government. Just to show you how times and politics changes in terms of a day in politics is a lifetime. Listen in. Our former boss made the mistake. He brought people into government who did not believe in his vision. So we cannot make that mistake. And I want to confirm because some people are saying, oh, love the president Raka, handshake, oh, Rikijidi Wataki. Let me tell you, President Ruto is even more strict about this handshake nonsense than I am. He cannot accept. The handshake experiment was the worst thing to happen in the politics of this country. And there is no leader who has won an election with a comfortable margin who will be out of his mind to go and bring his opponents to come to his government. That would be the, making democracy nonsensical. Why do we go for elections? Kama tunaenda uchaguzi, at wale wa meshindwa, at wanaingizu wa dani. Then hiko hajagani ya kuzubua raia. Situ wachana na mabu ya uchaguzi, tuita wazea nyumba kumi wa gawe viti. Wasema mimi, Hassan Joho, nikitaka kuongea. Mimi, I don't even dream of engaging with them. Ati uwe akitaka haji ya ongezi, you know, mimi ni onge Naruto ni ni. Yani at this time, 2021, you are telling me my solution is a wheelbarrow. We have a choice.
to make either decision to reject over 60 percent of these names or give President Ruto his skunk. Let us not interfere with it. We give it to him. He has asked for it. Let us give him his cabinet. We know he's going to run the government from state house. These are not people who can run a government. Apart from a few individuals who are not even more than eight, the rest are incompetent, unqualified, have integrity issues, are people who cannot deliver this country from where it is to the next level that we want the country to move in. Now, what on it, our Kali and Gumu? Amar Magani. Sindio. What we need is a rule of pandisha pressure. Sasa tumeenda kwa hii sasa tumeenda 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 unaona sasa mdabadi wetangula wako kwa bottom up wanatanga tanga lakini hapo nyuma msalia na mdabadi wetangula walikuwa kona gani wewe endelea kuhangaika hapa Ilurid <laughs> watu watakutana na nani waje hapo kwa round about ukipiga kelele ati haribu mali atiliyotumuite Akafanya hivyo kwa Moi akaitwa. Akafanya hivyo kwa Kibake akaitwa. Akafanya the same kwa Uhuru akaitwa. It will not happen again. Ye akae kwake. Si hapo na wajukuu. Akae huko. Tengeneze uji ya wimbi, kae na wajukuu. Angalie Family TV, afanye video anataka. Kama maandamano ni ya maana si ulete bibi yako afanye maandamano. Kama mkutupa mawe ni ya maana si ulete mtoto wako atupe mawe. Ah bana bana hiyo maneno no ama na magani jameni if every cycle you spend one whole year and in this case in our case is two years before the election campaigning then you spend another two years after the election campaign trying to sort out the political mess umebaki na mwaka mmoja kufanya kazi Uchumi kweli tutapanua wenzangu vijana kweli tutawapatia kazi ya yeah? Raila Odinga ali William Ruto work together na kuna watu tatacho kwa mata ali no baba baba hii kitu mnaita yes he is in opposition through what is right but look at he is always where in the warm corner of the opposition <laughs> sio ile iko labaridi <laughs> eh nikitoa taiti Nikito ntaitika Nikito ntaitika Na nikawambia my friends Be very careful It is very exciting and it is very sweet But we must stop this culture Of use and dispose Use and dispose Use and dispose all right, just an array of voices across the political divide speaking to the change of heart that plays out in the political discourse in this country. So as you come in, Kennedy, what happens to those who believed that not this time in terms of Raila joining government? Yeah, yeah basically... I will request to just continue from where I just left uh, the other time. Uh, because these are extraordinary times, and you have to, uh, to believe. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my colleague panelists may argue in any way, <laughs> but uh, if you look at the writings that were done by medieval ju jurist uh, called uh, Henry de Bratton, he, he, he brings in the concept of necessity in governance. You see, while we want to rule, by the law, because we have what is called the rule of law. And we also want to bring in the strong concept of constitutionalism, and we want to bring a strong concept of morality, because that's, it's now about morality, somebody changing from left, going to right. It's about morality. Somebody breaking the law is about constitutionalism. But now, these two might act in solidarity to safeguard the governance of the country yeah. when the state is at a particular situation which is not good. And so that principle, as even later explained by William Blackstone, he says that when all roads are leading to the right path of democracy and constitutionalism, <coughs> the path that might lead to economic recovery 
and economic development of a country might not in that might not be in that particular direction. Mm. And therefore, there is need for a drastic, extraordinary action. The president, in his <coughs> right mind, knows and he knew uh, the, the historical development of our country. You can know uh, uh, during Moi time, during Kibaki time, during Uhuru's time. There is always a time when our economic growth, our gross domestic product, is really in, in, in trouble. And that is when Raela usually comes in. And so the person who has been the denominator in our political dispensation, development, or orientation and disorientation is one Raela Molodinga. And that is why I can tell you. Okay. Uh, maybe somebody once said that Raela Odinga is supposed to be a full faculty in any <laughs> political science institution. And I support that. It's not because of uh, the myriad of challenges he has gone through, several losses Roger, he has had in uh, political campaigns. Roger, Rogers, I don't, I don't want to interrupt him, but I want to ask one question. You know we are talking to Kenyans. Yes. 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 Let's not make uh, just a statement and uh, believe that that statement is coming from uh, uh, one of the renowned uh, media house. What is extraordinary in demanding for accountability, uh, uh, wastage of uh, government resources, uh, um, co uh, you know, uh, fighting corruption, and of course, uh, above all, um, bringing issues related to uh, mismanagement of resources and uh, lack of, uh, you know, uh, accountability and performance. So you're saying there's nothing is, extraordinary exactly. with that. What it's is just, extraordinary? Tell yeah. us, you know, we want you Kenyans see, to hear what so is extraordinary. When, when, when I make my point, because he has repeated I, I, that I several times. Okay. Because I can tell you, was it normal to have for the first time demonstrators breaking into parliament? No. Is that not extraordinary? No. Was it the first time you're seeing the nature of young people leading their own demonstration and declaring it leaderless, faceless, and in fact, they are addressing issues which the old political family or political team has never addressed. Is that not extraordinary? Everything in this demonstration was very extraordinary, and I believe that the president of the country that we have today is the one who acted in this most an extraordinary situation. Okay. And so, uh, that situation allows him to okay fine when he said i need a dialogue with these people right. then he had to call for a dialogue and when he called for a dialogue senior nobody wanted to come from gen z's so who did so you want to dialogue? jesse we need to no. snatch the mic so <laughs> that uh, we don't lose that that's a very important dream yeah. <laughs> yes. and by okango you can come in but you know it is true. This why, this why, this why, Jesse, these are extraordinary. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll come back. It, Apologies for that. It is true <laughs> that these are extraordinary times. Okay. What Kenyans are complaining about is who brought up these extraordinary times? It was the youth. It was the Gen Z. Uh -huh. It was not Raila Odinga. This time round, he has done immense, tremendous good work before. But this time around, the youth stole the show. They said, Baba, just rest. Let's, we, there's something we want just to show you. And they showed him that uh, stopping at negotiations never helps. But going into action mm. helps. Now, the head of state has decided he wants something, you know, he wants a certain situation to present itself, which is fake, because he wants to deal with Kalonzo, he wants to deal with Raila, he wants to deal with political elites. That's where the youth are again mm. saying, maybe we are not off the, off, off the hook yet. They might actually plan to go to the streets, or they might bring other proposals. But the truth is, the extraordinary times have not been handled in the right way by extraordinary measures. They have gone back to the old mm. ways of coming together as political leaders. Okay. We have one man of 32 years now who was appointed to uh, some ministry. Uh, yes, and we are making that a big issue. Why don't we have three or four? Why don't we have a representative from the, the, the marginalized uh, groups okay. and also the dis, you know, uh, persons with disability? Uh, disability sorry. So, okay, go, so uh, those, uh, 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 Jesse, I am, uh, I am a believer Jesse. of mental manipulation, especially intellectual manipulation, is so rampant in this country. That's why when Dr. Isaac uh, raised that issue, whenever we speak, let us be sure that we also appreciate the audience. Mm. What are they likely to pick? Okay. J Jesse, <laughs> we'll come you, you know, we, and I, I wish you give me now time because I've been listening to my colleagues here speak. Uh, <laughs> some of the statements are so theoretical. 
we are a constitutional democracy. And in this country, we believe we are one Kenya because we are bound by the tenets of the Constitution. Okay. The President of the Republic of Kenya, forget about President Ruto, any president, even if it was uh, Wakili here sitting in that office today, is bound by certain things. And I want to just give you one example. What is called national values and principle of governance that binds all state and public officers, including any person in how they conduct themselves. There's a value of national governance that's called national unity. When the president gives his state of address, one of the reports that he must give is the effort his government has made towards achieving the national unity. And I'll take you back. We are talking about, I don't know, opposition, I don't know Raila, I don't know Kalonzo. I mean, that is neither here nor there. The people of Kenya gave themselves a constitution that they believe is progressive, mm -hmm. and they want to see it work. Mm -hmm. The Gen Z, when they came out, they said they want the constitution implemented. They said they want to see aspects of accountability. They said they want to see what is this public debt. They said they want to see end of negative ethnicity. You just played a clip. We were told that we are a shareholder's government. As a new, we rejected. We said, no, we are a sovereign state. We are not a shareholder state. Now you have so become shareholders now. That means <laughs> every person has a right to enjoy the benefits of development in this country. Okay. And for you to do that, you need three things. You need the people that are suitable to do the job. You need the people that are competent to do the job. And lastly, you need people with personal integrity in parliament, in the executive, in the county government. What the president has done, he listened to the issue of negative ethnicity and particularly in appointment in public service. Mm -hmm. So when he brings in people that in his view he feels he can work with, and that does not end with him alone, it goes to parliament. When parliament one day, in next week I believe, say that so and so in our vetting we believe is not suitable, that will be the end of that person. The president will renominate. So there's no fear that people are trying to bring here. You know, they, they are now joined, <coughs> they are now shareholders, not whatsoever. Let me just finish, because my colleagues have talked. <laughs> okay. No, no, because you, you're mentioning parliament, yet, Okango, I believe we were together yes. when you were the opposition side of the, of the benches. We were quite categorical in terms of mentioning that the executive has taken over parliament. The parliament is an appendage of the executive. And that's, then how do we expect and that's it? that's why we are saying, mm -hmm. we are saying we are a constitutional democracy. Yes. If parliament can live by the provisions of Article 93, 94, and 96, 95 and 96, that demands of them, number one, to excess oversight over revenue. Number two, to address issues of concern to the people. Number three, to uh, appropriate uh, revenue. That is the role they should do, irrespective of... So you of believe the, ODM lawmakers can shoot I down believe, a name like John Buddy? I believe, mm. I believe with objectivity, yes. if there is any reason as to why a presidential <laughs> nominee into cabinet must be seen not to be qualified with evidence table, then that name should be shut down. But I also believe... But this, sorry, just hold on. Yeah, just but but I also believe mm -hmm. that in doing so, you must demonstrate beyond reasonable doubt that this is the, the, the correct thing. But okay, lastly, fair. Jesse, yep. let me tell you, we are in a political uh, environment. President is a product of politics. The deputy president is a product of politics. And politics is what drives the agenda of a state. So if that is the case, then also certain problems require political solution. The political solution that we need today, we need people outside that will check. We need people inside the parliament that will check. Then we need people inside that will do the job. And those who will do the job, there are certain parameters that the constitution gives us to weigh them to measure them. And if they don't do, there are also measures to remove them from those offices. We have not exploited the limit of our constitution. Okay. We just keep on talking and we don't want to exploit it. I want to ask the people of Kenya, at these extraordinary times that Ken is talking about, we are now testing the constitutional limits. And one of the limits is that 
Is it possible that we can have people who are suitable, capable, competent, with personal integrity to do the job? Yes. How do we arrive there? Parliament must leave its, its stage. Honorable Junet Muhammad, who is the minority whip from our Azimio, said it clearly. Junet Muhammad said that anyone who appear before the vetting committee, they will thoroughly check them and vet them in accordance with the law. And if they found that person unsuitable, they will reject and so take they, that back. So, so I want to believe see, okay. that parliament will do the job. Yeah. Is competency <laughs> limited to politicians? I mean, that, that, that's where... Uh, uh, you know, let me, let me, let me as we take in, a break. Let me come in for briefly. Because yes. you see, my minutes were taken from me. Uh, Desmond, Desmond Ford once said, yes, and yes, it yes. is a statement that everybody has repeated whenever they want to justify their change of position, okay, okay. that a wise man changes his mind, but a fool doesn't. Mm. And to change your mind is a clear indication that you have one. You see, lack of that makes you be static to the extent that who has never changed his mind in this political environment? In mm. Kenya, who has never? Is it Kalonzo, who penyad katikati one day? Is it Martha Karua, who one day said Kibaki must go back and with all eyes wide open, she insisted that Raila doesn't become president? Is it, is, it, uh, uh, is it the current uh, 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 chief cabinet secretary, Mudabadi, who even one day turned a bottle demonstrating <laughs> how bottom up will be bottom, will mean nothing? I get you. Everybody Kennedy, Kennedy, in this political Kennedy, I think. Now, I wanted to bring is, my point. We, we have to take a break. We'll be back, back with, after we'll be back with <laughs> your points. We'll be back. Allow me to take that break, gentlemen. As we come back, we'll be posing that question, what happens when the line becomes blood, the line between government, and I know the Constitution does not say Kenyan opposition and whatnot, but what happens when the line becomes blood, opposition and government? We heard from the uh, previous government where Ruto categorically mentioned that our lingia wakavuruga so will that happen this time round since the lines have become blood? That's the question we'll be posing to our panelists. Allow us to take a short break. We'll be back in a few.